Hello, hello, hello. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Hey, it's uh, just had a couple minutes. And so I just thought I would jump on and see what you guys are up to. If I could answer any questions. Um, let's see if anybody joins me. I'll hang out for a few minutes. Let's see if, if anybody joins me. It's just kind of impromptu. I'm sitting here like, do I go live? Do I not go live? Do I go live? Do I not go live? We've got a lot. Of course, it's the week before Christmas. It's the next level. Everything challenge is about to start. I'm going to be um, record, doing some recording uh, later today and tomorrow. I can't wait. So if you just popped on, say hi. So I know who's here. I see somebody watching me. Hello, 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 hello. I'm excited about the challenge. So um, it starts on December the 26th, the day after Christmas. Um, and I've been working on the content. <sighs> I'm so excited about the content. Um, I'm so excited for those of you who are going to take the challenge with me. So I wanted to just, since I'm here, I'm waiting to see if anybody shows up and I'm here just to take questions, but I'm killing time to see. So if you pop on, number one, say hello. And then number two, if you have a question, a question about anything, I will answer questions for a few minutes. I have a few minutes before I have to shift to my next thing. And um, I didn't have anything prepared to say, but you know, I can always find a reason and something to talk about. Um, and I'm gonna share just a quick story. So say hello. So I see some people watching me. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Say hi, so I know who's here. And do you have a question about anything, about anything, for your business, anything for your life, anything for your faith, anything about bringing them together. How can I support you? What can I do for you? It's the week before Christmas. Um, it's the week before the new year. Hey, Janelle, how are you? Um, like, what's going on? What are you working on? H how can I help? Hey, Sue, how are you? Just no agenda. Just wanted to jump on um, real quick just to see if people had any questions. Got any questions that I could answer? It's the week before Christmas, next Wednesday is Christmas. Next Thursday, we start the Next Level Everything Challenge. Yo, if you have not registered for the challenge, you need to stop playing. You need to stop playing. Hey, Markeith, you need to stop playing and register. Let me put um, the link in there. Next Level Everything.me. You need to register for the challenge. Let me just tell you, I have been working on the content. I'm gonna be recording the videos. Um, I need to get my makeup done and all of that stuff. Well, actually I don't need to get my makeup done. I kind of want to though, um, before I record the videos. But the first, the kickoff video, oh, I have an amazing demonstration that I'm gonna do for you to show you what your life looks like right now without you getting everything in place to go to the next level. So, so yeah, so like, what's what's up? I see Janelle, I see Marquise, I see Sue. Any questions about anything? Anything, anything. I mean, how often do I jump on and say, just ask me a question about anything? Um, I would love to take some questions. It's the holiday. Like, how can I serve and support you? I just, I posted a video on my personal page. If you happen to be connected with me personally, it's gonna post in the group tonight that I shot last Friday, the 13th. And when I and you'll see it when you watch it, it's only like three and a half minutes. But when you see that video, I will be talking about the fact that I have the business has done like forty some thousand dollars is what it was last Friday. Since then, we've done another fifty k. So we're at like ninety five thousand dollars in the last twelve or however many days it's been since the first sale. Let me tell you the first sale that kind of kicked this off. When was that? That was December the December the 5th. So in the last 13 days, we've done $95,000 in sales. And so let's see, what does that come out to? $95,000 divided by 13. So that's like $7,300 a day. Is there anybody who could get excited about that? And maybe as a result has a question that I could answer while I'm here for a few minutes, just popping in. Um, gearing up for 2020, excited about the challenge, excited about the season two of the podcast, excited about the next level everything tour, excited about breakthrough in business, next level everything. We're just excited over here, like excited, excited, excited. But I want to make sure that you finish the year strong. The year ain't over yet. 
today is the 18th. So that means we still have what, 13 days left in this year? 13 days left in this year. There's still 13 days left in this in this year. I mean, let's let's just talk about it for a second. Like what's possible that could happen for you in the next 13 days? Let, let's not even make it just about bringing on new clients and money, right? Because I'll be the first to admit that it ain't all about the money. The money is important, right? None of us would be able to le- live and take care of our families and add value in our communities if there was no money, right? We wouldn't be able to get to the causes. Like I have an entire account that I tithe into. So I believe in the principle of tithing and I tithe 10% off the top of everything that we make in the business. So before we carve anything out, we put our 10% in the tithe account and it's my mission to empty that account before the year is out. So I'm going to go out probably tonight because I'm, um, I have to go out for an appointment. And while I'm out, I'll probably run to Walmart or somewhere, probably Walmart. And I'm going to pay off a layaway. I'm sure somebody still has a layaway out there. So I'm just going to go pay off somebody's layaway. I'm giving to causes. Like I made a donation. I went to the University of Delaware and I made my yearly donation for the U- University of Delaware today. I got a couple, oh, where are they? I got a couple of um, request for gifts in the mail from a couple of organizations and ministries that I've supported over the course of the year that I'm going to be writing checks to. I believe in giving. I believe in the principle of tithing. And so what I did for my business next year, yeah, question. What I did for my business next year, instead of, instead of setting a revenue goal, I set a tithe goal. And so I'm going to share it with you. My tithe goal is a quarter of a million dollars. Now, those of you who know the principle of tithing, I did a podcast episode on it. If you know the power of the 10%, in order for me to tithe a quarter of a million dollars, that means my business needs to do how much? $2.5 million. I'm pretty excited about that. All right. So what is the best way to keep the momentum in your business after you had lost a client? Oh yeah, that's a good question, Janelle. You know what? Never take it personal, right? And so I always say this, if a person says no, whether they're saying no during the discovery session process and they never become your client or after they become your client, they say no. They're not saying no to Janelle. What they are saying is that they are not, in this particular case, because it's a lost client, they're not not interested in continuing to experience transformation through you. When you frame it that way, do you even want them to be your client? Like who wants to work with people who don't wanna get transformation from you? Nobody, right? And know that, As the old saying goes, I'm going to do a podcast episode on it. One monkey don't stop the show. You ever been to the circus? Let them lose a monkey. I bet you (laughs) the show still goes on. One monkey doesn't lose a show. But I'm not trying to trivialize the loss of a client because, of course, that's revenue that's no longer coming in. This is why it's so important to never stop marketing in your business. And this is why you've got to have systems in place so that you're perpetually marketing. You're, so you think about the continuum, right? So this is what it looks like. We clarify our ideal client. We determine our lead generation tool. Lead generation is how we're bringing leads into the business. Once the lead comes into the business, right, they are going to opt in. They're going to opt in and start to self-select to let us know that they're interested in what we have to offer. We're then going to nurture them. And in the nurturing process, eventually, they're going to be ready to be presented with a sales tool. And then we're going to present them with the sales tool, make them an offer, and either we're going to follow up until they enroll or we're going to enroll them. That's the continuum. And so in order for business to to miss it, to miss the withdrawals, you've got to make sure you've got enough deposits. And so if there are not enough deposits, then the withdrawals will hurt. And so what I teach clients, Janelle, is to focus on the deposits. So what is happening on a daily basis to get a new deposit? And so that deposit is not just money coming into the bank account because you got a, a new client, right? But it's the right marketing activity. It's profit producing activity, not awareness generating activity. While you need both, I think there's an 80-20 blend. So 80% of the time you need to be doing activity that generates revenue, 20% of t- the time you need to be doing activity that generates awareness, right? But it's it's creating consistent deposits so that there's always deposits coming into the business. Does that make sense? That's the really, really important thing um, that you want to be doing so that there is no momentum loss. So what I would tell you now is forgive yourself, forgive them. It's not personal. 
They're not saying, I don't like you, Janelle. They're just saying they don't want to re experience transformation through you and, um, and pick up from here. So go back and look at your systems. What do you have in place in your marketing system to help to make sure that your numbers are such that when the next time this happens, because it will happen again, none of us are exempt from it. The next time it happens, you don't even feel it. I, I said this on, on one of my client calls last night. Um, and, and basically what I said to them, the reason why it hurts is because they don't have enough numbers. This particular person had a discovery session and the person was all gung-ho and excited, but then they weren't showing up. They weren't making the deposit. It's similar to the pop quiz this week. And um, I said, it only hurts. You're only putting all your time and attention on it because you don't have anything else going on. So get some other things going on, get some other deposits going on in your business. And then that'll make it less uh, painful the next time that um, a client excuses themselves from transformation through you. Does that help? Hey, Nefeteria, who else is here? Who has a question? Who else is here who has a question? Who else has a question? Can I take another question? That was a good question, Janelle. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download this video and I'm gonna edit it just on the part of answering your question. Cause I thought that was, that was a good response. If I do say so myself, as I pat myself on the back. Hey, Nefeteria, um, questions, who else has a question? I know there's a few more of you watching. What's going on in your business? Like as you are starting to prepare to finish 2019 strong and prepare for 2020, What's going on in your business? Listen, I'm offering you an opportunity to get some complimentary consulting, okay? I'm not gonna do this always. <laughs> it's in the name of the holidays. It's Christmas. Um, what questions can I answer? Any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I'm a roll. I'm so so not gonna hold you guys hostage looking at me sitting in my office. Um, <laughs> if there are no more questions, if there are no more questions, I will go and get ready. I have a couple of discovery sessions this afternoon. So I will go get ready to bring in some more money. So we can, we can do, you know, I'm going to try my goal, my new goal. If I, if I had a goal and based on the momentum that's going on here now is to do definitely do at least now that we're already sitting right at hundred K to do, I want to do at least like 150, but I'd love to get to 200 K. Like, would that not be cool to do $200,000 in the month of December when people are saying, is the holidays like how cool would that be coming into the new year okay another question how do you not feel over overwhelmed when you do get started getting a lot of clients sometimes i slow myself down when a lot of people inquire about my services yeah another great question um it's the systems write this down systems make success predictable systems make success predictable. And one of the seven systems is your client management system. And so it's important in that system to get everything set up. Listen, this is probably gonna make you wanna flip your wig, Janelle, and you have a beautiful head of hair. So you would never actually be wearing a wig probably. But anyway, um, once upon a time in 2014, I believe it was, we onboarded 125 clients at one time. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy town. Okay. But let me just tell you that all 125 clients were on board and we sent a, a nice gift out to our clients when they, it's not, I mean, we, we just upgraded to the box. That's new, but we've been sending client gifts since I was a natural blonde. Right. Um, but we on board 125 clients at one time. And within two weeks, all of those clients were on boarded. It's systems. This is what I teach. So when I say leverage and scale your way to six-figure cash flow, that's what I'm talking about. How to set up the right systems, how to make it such that you can work one to many and really expand the impact that you're able to make in your business and to do it reliably. Now, I have support. I have, have full-time full employees in my company. I always have at least one person physically with me in the office. 
Um, I'm sure many of you guys remember Marlena. She's off on permanent maternity leave, getting ready to welcome her son, Daniel. And so I have a new assistant, Clarissa, who is here on the team. She actually just started this week. That's why there's that chair in the background because she's shadowing me. And we have systems and we have checklists for everything so that nothing falls through the cracks. I actually, hold on. So this is, just to show you what it looks like for one of the systems, Janelle, this is a new client checklist. Um, let me cover the client's name and, and anonymity. But we have this checklist that we follow for our new clients to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks when we onboard them. So that's an example of what, what needs to be in your client management system. Um, if you have, I don't know if you did, if you did or if you didn't, um, but if you don't have a copy of our Grow Your Business Toolkit, you should get it. It's like $2.97 and it, it details to you what the systems are and what you need to have in place in order to reduce some of that overwhelm that happens in your business. Um, yeah, and figure out what support you, support you need so that you don't have to slow down. Um, okay, how often should you follow up with someone who you've had a discovery session with but they didn't sign on to work with you? That's always a tricky question, Tanya. And you know what, I, I typically, so my, my follow-up goes in stages. So we have the follow-up that happens immediately after discover session, discovery session, right? So immediately after the discovery session, we're checking in right away. And we're checking in at minimum, probably every two weeks. I probably do it every week when, they, when they're the warmest. So the closer you are to the, the discovery session, the more attempts you want to make. The further removed you get from it, then you can kind of reduce, you can kind of loosen the reins, if you will. So you're going to do, so initially, so we have our discovery session on Monday. At that point, we set a, a check-in time. So typically the check-in is within a week. So let's say it's the following Monday we check in. I check in with you that Monday, you don't answer, whatever the case might be. That Monday, I'm making a note to check in with you that Friday. That Friday, I check in with you, you don't answer, then I'm calling you the following Monday or Tuesday. That Monday or Tuesday, you don't answer, I'm calling you the following Friday. So it's like close together twice in one week when we first have the conversation. Once we get to the point where we're about 30 days out, the likelihood that they're going to close gets less and less and less. So what I do then is I pull back and I might then go to every couple of weeks, or every third week or every 30 days. We also, we, we have systems at Incredible One Enterprises. So we also have an automated email sequence that has checkpoints after the discovery session if they don't close for, the, for a year, for 12 months. So I put that tag on their account so that those automated prompts go out. What I'm doing is phone calls, text messages. I even will create a personal video for them. I literally get on my camera and be like, hey, Tanya, it's Darnielle. Listen, I've been trying to reach you, whatever the case might be. Talk about their situation. Talk about what I, um, what I see for them. Because see, what's amazing about me, and I know you know this, Tanya, because we've worked together. But what's amazing about me, what I pe don't think people realize, but y'all are going to realize because we're doing some amazing things in 2020 to elevate our brand, my brand, the brand. Um, but one of the things I think people don't realize about me is that, first of all, I am prophetic. And what that means, for those of you who don't know what it means, is it means that I hear from God and I see you the way God sees you. So when you tell me what you want to do in your business, I see that. I see what's possible. Even when I look at you, as you're making the decision to hire me, I already know what strategies I'm going to introduce you to that's going to take your business to the next level. I already know that because I'm prophetic. And what I do is I hold the space for people and I, I'm a, I hold up a mirror to show them who it is that God wants to be, but only when they accept the invitation. I believe you have to be invited to transform. And so if we have the conversation and you say you're in and you got to figure out the deposit and all of that kind of stuff, I give you the space to decide or undecide because I only want to work with people who are ready to experience transformation. That's it. I, I'm not into babysitting business owners. I'm not into dragging people and, and having to convince them that they should work with me. Listen, I'm amongst the best who ever did it, right? And so I show up in that confidence and that energy at all times because I know I'm a 
bad check. I look at the success that we've gotten for the clients we work with. Okay, do you guys know this? You probably don't know this, so I'm going to tell you right now. We have been, I've been coaching for 10 years. So for a decade, I've been coaching. And do you know that in 10 years, the people that we've worked with have done a combined $80 million? $80 million. And that's me just telling you about the money. Let's, that's, not even, that's not even talking about the life changes that have happened and how people have moved closer to God, how their relationships have been restored, how they have left situations that weren't for them, whatever the other things that needed to happen inside of their life to happen. All of that happened by them coming to work with me for their business. So I said all of that to say, Tanya, I know how brilliant you are and how amazing you are. I know you're your energy and your demeanor is not mine, but I think that there's a level of confidence even in Tanya to make sure that that's what you're putting out and, and create it. Again, closest to the call, frequent, and then kind of space it out and then just check on it every once in a while, unless you get the nod in your spirit that you shouldn't. So another quick story about this while I'll wait for another question. Um, is I have a person that I, I, we, she probably has, should have been working with me years ago and didn't hire me, whatever. People have to be ready. And I accept that. I like to meet you where you are. Um, and so we had a conversation and she's like, I'm in, I'm ready. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Okay, bet. Well, when, you know, when, when are we circling back? We set the circle back date. I followed up because I'm a follow upper and crickets and crickets and crickets and crickets and i literally last week was like i'm not following up with her anymore <laughs> i'm over it um and then god this morning was like call her follow up with her again didn't get her but followed up in obedience so sometimes what i'm saying tanya is gauge based on the, the what you feel in your spirit about that person and if you should be working with them then keep going because sometimes they need a, they need a little bit more time and a lovingly nudge. Like you don't have to be, it should never be pressure first and foremost, right? You should never be begging anyone to be your client because it is not that serious. Um, but, but just staying top of mind, if that's what you need to do. And there are ways to do that that don't necessarily require you to be on the phone, reaching out to them every single week. But in initially in that first 30 days or so, I would recommend a pretty aggressive follow-up strategy. Hopefully that helps. Hey, Andy. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, J oh, Janelle, of course you were already here. Um, <laughs> hey, Natasha. Um, other questions. What questions can I answer? What questions can I answer? Again, this is just, it's the week before Christmas. Um, my clients are getting, they're going to be getting their Christmas presents soon. But, you know, I just wanted to show some love and just um, share the gift that is my brain. For those of you for the holiday, before we get to the next level, everything challenge, for those of you who are joining me, if you have not already signed up to be in the challenge, what are you waiting for? You need to register. It's going to be so juicy good. I'm going to be recording the videos. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I'm recording them in case anybody's wondering. I will be going live periodically too, but I'm recording them because I don't want you to have to wait until I get up and get in my office. <laughs> to get the next challenge so we're gonna we're gonna automate it and but like even using that like i'm really big into systems people come to me for systems to help them to get the right systems in place so that they can make their businesses move faster better stronger more succinctly than they could on their own and so i'm really big into making sure that the systems are set up okay any other questions you're welcome tanya hey oh you just saying hi back to me saying hi any other questions? Any other questions? I know y'all don't want to just look at me. I mean, I am cute, but <laughs> I know y'all don't want to just look at me. What other questions can I answer? Listen, this is free, complimentary, complimentary in honor of the holiday. Okay. When you're all over the place and have multiple gifts, how do you create tunnel vision to start? Oh, that is a good question, Stephanie. So let me say this, and this is a Mary Kay Ash quote. You cannot chase two rabbits and expect to catch either one. So what you want to do is you want to create a strategic plan for your multifacetedness. I am not saying that you cannot do multiple things, but you need to look at which things to do in an effort that is going to bring you to the ultimate goal or result as quickly as possible, right? You can be a multifaceted brand, but depending upon what those things are, 
that's going to determine how you um, you show up with them, right? So for I'm just going to make some stuff up for the sake of the example. Let's say you are brilliant at event planning. And I'm just saying that because I know you you work on, you do event planning, right? And then let's say you're also amazing at um, whole, uh, being an accountability coach. And then let's say you also sing and you you know you have a musical interest and you recently discovered hot yoga and now you're becoming certified to be a yogi. I don't know, I'm just making it up. But those are four different passions that you could have that you could all be like, okay, well, where do I start? Okay. So in the event that you had those four different things going on, what I would tell you to do is I would tell you to kind of lay them all out on the table and ask your spirits. Notice I said your spirit, check in with your spirit, right? I don't think we try the spirit by the spirit enough. So I was, I would say, ask your spirit or as you think of each, which makes your spirit leap. That's the one I would do first. And, of, well, hold on, let me caveat that. The one that makes your spirit leap, then the second question is, does this solve a real problem for someone? Because the universal law of business, Stephanie says, find a group of people who have the problem that you solve that are ready right now to pay for a solution to the problem. So if your spirit leaps when you think of hot yoga, <laughs> then we know people who, for whom that yoga is going to solve a problem, right? Stress, release, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to make sure that wherever you're starting, you can actually make money from it. Because if you spend your time and energy on something that's not going to make you money and it's a business, then you're going to be in trouble because you're really just creating an expensive hobby. And we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Does that help you? Hey, Andy. Um, who else has a question? Who else has a question? Any other questions? Again, I say if you have not registered for the next level everything challenge i'm put the link in here again you need to do it it's gonna be so juicy good so juicy good um yeah it's gonna be so juicy good you so need to be in the challenge what else what else i got y'all some of y'all watching i know y'all got to have questions listen i'm not gonna keep begging y'all to ask me questions so that i can use my gift and favor and influence on your behalf. I'm not gonna keep doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I got other stuff I can do. Hey, Carlin, okay. Can you talk about how to create value in a leadership development program for clients as I solve their problem? Okay, so um, I'm probably gonna need a little bit more information in order to be able to talk about it. But, but yeah, but let's just, okay. So the program itself, you want to be thinking about, and, and some of you have heard me say that this, and you probably are like, you talking about the spice problem again, Darnell? Yes, it's all about the spice problem. So the first thing is you want to make sure that the leaders that you're working with, they have a very specific, pervasive, insurmountable, clear, and expensive problem, right? And then you want to create for them the, the, the spice solution, the specific, positive, um, intentional, clear, and evident solution that's going to solve the problem in its entirety. So let's say for the sake of the example, um, you're working with aspiring leaders. So they have been, you know, working in their corporate jobs and they have maybe hit the first level of leadership. So maybe they're a team lead or whatever, depending upon the organization and the hierarchy of the organization. And they have a desire to accelerate up the leadership path, but they are not refined and polished. They don't understand um, the importance of personal branding. They don't They don't show up and dress for the job that they desire, not the one that they have right now. Let's just say those are some of their problems. The program that you put together for them might be, totally making this up off the top of my head, it might be a 90-day or 12-week leadership development program where you walk them through the core tenets of personal branding, where you bring in a stylist that will teach them how to dress professionally, that maybe you bring in an etiquette, a person who does business etiquette to teach them the way that they 
should be showing up in their position. You add all these things in that they need to get to the next level to make it a no-brainer for them, right? Adding value doesn't necessarily have to mean more of your time, Carlin, but this program, if you're going to be bringing other experts in to share, this program has to be priced so that you can afford to pay those people. But the value could be putting together a, a series of resources that they can um, have access to for a period of time. It, it could be things that you've done um, previously. It doesn't have to be things that you did live. Like, again, use I'll use my programs as an example. At Incredible Factor University, we have our Business Growth Accelerator, we have Business Growth Momentum, and then we have the Leverage and Scale Mastermind. Each of those programs has access to pre-recorded business growth content and strategy. So I've rec already created a curriculum of um, information that the clients have access to in a vault, essentially. It, makes, it gives me omnipresence. So they can't get Darnielle on the phone but there's a module that teaches them how to do whatever it is they might need to do so that they could do everything that they need to do. That's value. My community, the people who are in my programs, that's adding value to the program. Like for my mastermind in particular, um, by and large, the mastermind is filled with powerhouse, we're all women right now, powerhouse, bad to the bone, shaking the planet in their own right women. Bad, these chicks are bad in their industries. They are running the thing and they're all converging together in a place where I am supporting and, and coaching and mentoring them and, and helping to consult them to grow their businesses. Well, guess what? They all still add value. So everybody in the group gets the benefit of being in the group with these powerful people and they can leverage one another in order to accelerate. So that's part of the value too. Does that answer it for you? Um, William, am I doing the tours? Absolutely. So February, we will be announcing the the locations and the dates in January. So if you have not, William, already signed up for the Next Level Everything Challenge, please do. Because on Thursday, January the 2nd, at the culmination of the challenge, I'm doing a live webinar. And in the live webinar, I am announcing the 2020 Next Level Everything Tour, where we're going, when we're going to be there, what we're going to be covering, and how you can get your seat to join us in February. So yes, in February, we will be heading out on the road again on the road again. Is that Willie Nelson? Other questions? I have about 10 more minutes that I can spend with you only if you guys have questions. If you don't have any other questions, then I'm a roll. But I have about 10 more minutes if there is another question. If this, if there is another question. Who's doing Christmas shopping? If you're doing Christmas shopping and you haven't even started yet, comment, that's me. <laughs> I just I just started. Let me tell you all about my husband. <laughs> so I got, we we have done a lot this year. And so we, when, and when I say we, I mean me. I said, babe, let's not, let's not go crazy on Christmas. We, I mean, we are people who pretty much have everything that we desire. We have it. Um, let's not go crazy on Christmas. We don't need a whole bunch of stuff. We went to Dubai and we spent a couple dollars in Dubai. Um, you know, we've done all of these things. Let's just kind of chill. So we, I gave us a hundred dollar limit for our Christmas presents and I did really well. I stayed within my hundred dollars. Uh, but my husband has figured out both of his Christmas presents, both of them. So the first one, <laughs> I went to the mall and it was in my backseat and I asked him to bring something out of the car for me. And he goes, oh, I see you got me. <laughs> and then the other one I got from Amazon and it came and I thought the box was heavy. So I had him bring it in the house. And he's like, oh, who'd you get this, who'd you get this for? So he done already opened his Christmas present and is using it, which is just crazy. Oh, another question. Sorry. What are the three top things I should know about your ideal client? Ooh, ooh girl, that's a good question. Um, okay. So you need to know, in fact, hold that thought. I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up this document because I think this will be helpful. Um, Y'all better thank uh, Carlin for asking that question because this is good. This is good. Um, mm, 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 mm. 
you know what? It might be easier to do it from this way. Your drop. Anybody have a Dropbox that's so big that they can't find anything when they want to find it? Like that's what my Dropbox looks like. I have so many files. It is not even funny. But I know I was just looking at it not too long ago. So let me see if I can pull it up this way. This might be easier. Uh, uh, uh. I know it's here. I think I was looking at it last. Here we go. All right. So one of the things that I recommend, Carlin, is that you um, you get into. Uh oh, what happened? Am I not live anymore? Oh, hold on. <laughs> I got too many windows up on my computer. One of the things that I recommend that you do when you are working with clients is get into their brain. You got to think like them, right? And so there's a series of things you need to know. So you said the top three. So I'm going to give you three. So you want to think about, again, the spice problem. Let me pull this over here. You want to think about the spice pro problem. That is the specific and substantive, pervasive and persistent, immediate, insurmountable, clear and conscious, expensive and expansive problem, right? So you need to you need to think about what is their problem, right? What's the thing that's keeping them awake at night? What's the thing that's preventing them from moving forward in their life? And then there, here are three things you should know about them. Um, number one, you need to know how that problem is affecting them financially. You need to know how that problem is affecting them emotionally. And you need to know how that problem is impacting their relationships. Now, I have taught over the years that there's six different categories that the problem you solve needs to fall into. And when it does, you're golden. You're going to be solving a problem that people are going to be willing to invest in a solution to access, which is really, really important. But understanding those three things about your client, how that how that problem, that spice problem is affecting them financially, emotionally, and it impacting their relationships. Because those are the three that get people to move the most. So that's what I would tell you. Um, uh, other questions? I have about five minutes left. Other questions? Any other questions I can answer? Merry Christmas to those of you who just joined me or those of you who will listen back to this in the replay, hashtag replay. I had no agenda. I just popped on. It's the week week for Christmas. Just wanted to um, give the gift of my brain and just take some questions from people as they endeavor to finish the year strong. And this is something I'm doing exclusively in the Six Figure Cash Flow Club. We will broadcast this video. We'll put it on our YouTube channel so that if you two have this question, you can hear the solution to it. I'll edit it a little bit because at the beginning, I think I was just talking to myself. So I'll take that out. I'll clean it up and then we'll put it on um, YouTube so that you can go there and potentially listen if you have one of the, the problems that um, we've experienced. Um, you're welcome, Carlin. Uh, about four minutes left. If there's another question, is there another question? Going once, going twice. All right, well, I'm gonna roll. Um, I will be back before Christmas. Um, but if again, if you have not already registered for the Next Level Everything Challenge, register. I mean, like, why wouldn't you? First of all, I'm doing it as a gift. It's complimentary. I could have charged for it. It's so juicy good. I chose not to because I didn't want anything to prevent anybody from being able to get the information. You know, one of the things that's important that you know about me is that first and foremost, I pray for you guys every single day. And I'm asking, I ask, literally ask God every single day. Well, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to say? What would, and what would you, who would you have me to say it to? And when we started thinking about next level everything and how we were going to personify it this year, once God gave us that theme for 2020, you know, and I started thinking about, oh, I haven't done a challenge in a while. Let's do a challenge. Challenges are big again. I did a challenge the last time it was 2013. So what was that seven years ago? That's the last cycle of when challenges were big. And the crazy thing about it is, you know, most things run in a seven year cycle. So here we are seven years, almost seven years later, and everybody's getting excited about challenges again. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to do a challenge and um, I'm going to do it as my gift. And it's going to be juicy good. This, I think if you guys know me, you know, I don't play like I don't I don't skimp. I don't live in the world of lack. 
And so I don't shortchange because I know who I am. I know whose I am and I know what it is that I'm here to do. So anyway, I don't see any more questions. Um, I'll hang out for 12 more seconds to see if anything pops in. And if not, I will bid you guys adieu until the next time. Um, like I said, there's going to be a quick three and a half minute video that drops this evening that you guys will see. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys. Well, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And I will see you again really, really soon. Take care.